Hey everybody, Christy Glass here with a unique video for you today. I was going through all of my sweaters and I realized that I have so many pieces that I either improvised or sort of put my own personal spin on. And this season of the year is such a creative time for me as I'm just drawn to the fiber arts. I wanna make all the things, I wanna create all of the things. So I wanted to do a series of videos just walking you through a few of the pieces that I have made that have sort of been inspired by something else, maybe not fibery or just something I wanted to do. So I'm not sure what to call this category. I guess I would call it fiber inspiration for you. So I want you to just stick around and I'll walk you through a few pieces. I do have some today that I have shared in great detail on my Patreon account, including some tutorials on even how to make them, including this one right here. So this is kind of like a sweater vest. I mean, it, it is fine as a standalone sweater. It has kind of a cap sleeve situation. You could layer it, I guess, over something, maybe a long sleeve something. It's okay standalone too. And this piece was totally inspired by this Instagram post that I saw from Sharon Stone. I don't think I even follow Sharon Stone, but you know when you're scrolling and things pop up, she was wearing this gorgeous dress. I believe it was by maybe Givenchy, I don't know. But if you Google or search flower designer dress Sharon Stone maybe, or also Sarah Jessica Parker I believe was photographed in a version of the dress. There was also a whole runway show. It was probably 2020, 2021 maybe, probably 2021. Anyways, it was this gorgeous blue dress and it was covered in actually silk flowers of varying sizes, shapes, colors, and it kind of was placed on the dress in a very beautiful line. I pulled out my mohair and I just started improvising flowers and this is what I came up with. Of course, I started with the base, which was also loosely based on the Lark Bagger sweater that she had with kind of the little bits and pieces of scrap she was putting in. I think I was sort of referring to those instructions to kind of get an idea on the size of needle and how many to cast on. But then after that, I was just going for it. So when I finished my two panels, I did end up folding it. I, I, I explained it all very clearly in the video on Patreon, but I just wanted to show this to you of an example of taking an image of someone wearing something totally not knitting and then transferring it into knitting. Now, the next thing that I got inspiration from was this company called Veronica Beard. Yeah, Veronica Beard, she has this line right now where she's selling dickies and blazer. So you get the blazer and they have, I believe there's technology on the inside like zippers or snaps or something where you can interchange a dickie so that it kind of looks like you have on an extra layer underneath your blazer, but you don't. I've only seen this in real life once and it wasn't even real life, it was probably on TV. I think it was the governor of Michigan uh, Governor Whitmer, she was wearing, I'm like, I think that's one of them. I think that's one of those dickies into blazers. So check those out on Veronica Beard. They're very expensive. I had this idea to make a dickie <laughs> out of cro crochet squares and I cannot put it over my head without unzipping it, but I got this really fun zipper in the garment district in New York. And did you know, you probably do know if you're someone who buys zippers, I didn't that you can get your zippers cut to size. So know before you go what size and they will cut it for you. So this is my little dicky. So you can put a little jacket on over it and it looks like you have on this little granny square cardigan with a special zipper. So this is another use of scraps. I had some beautiful sparkle wool from Yarn Cafe Creations and then the inside wool is leftovers from my advent from CGCG Yarns when I had the 80s advent. And I'm guessing this neon yellow that I used to tie it all together, can't remember where that was from. But anyway, that's another fiber moment that I just kind of used something I was seeing in fashion to create my own thing. Now this sweater, I saw this yarn at Park Avenue Knits. It was a new, at the time it was a brand new yarn shop in Detroit. 
I think this yarn and the pink are from Wool and the Gang, but I purchased it at the local yarn shop. And I just wanted to make a really cozy, almost sweatshirty sweater. So I literally just did math. I sat down and I did math. I think I probably knit a gauge swatch or something and then did my measurements and I did some math. Now it turned out not quite as I pictured, but it still fits me and it's still cozy and awesome. But this is one of those, it looks like a very plain Jane, easy breezy sweater. And like, there's probably a pattern for this out there somewhere cause it's so basic. But it is just something that I created using my own skills of knitting and math together. So it feels like a huge accomplishment. Now these last two I'm particularly proud of. So the first one I wanna show you is the a vest that I saw on the Anthropology website. And of course, right this second now I'm forgetting who the designer was, but she has a brick and mortar in Paris that I've actually gone to. And the piece, you know, so many times we see these pieces and we're like, well, yeah, I could buy that, but I could also make it. So I just kind of studied the piece and came up with my own version. It's very similar, but I was just looking at photographs. And so I started experimenting on how to make these flowers. And then I figured out how to put them together to make a vest. So there is a tutorial on how to do this on my Patreon account. The front is crocheted with some knitting, of course, on the cuffs, collar and hem. And then the back piece is also knitted. So. I guess you could figure out a way to crochet the whole thing based on what you learned from the tutorial, but this is just a really fun, basic piece to layer in for the fall. And it was a challenge to take something I could see and then make it come to life. And I think because we are fiber artists, we should be doing that all the time. We, we should not be buying sweaters <laughs> because we can make them. So this is one of those examples of that, um, and it was just really fun to challenge myself to figure it out. It took lots of trial and error, but I figured out a flower that I liked the look of it. I don't even know how to do it anymore. I'd have to go back and watch my own video, but it was really great. And I was able to use this wool from Sadness Garn. It's the brushed alpaca. It's so dreamy to work with. Speaking of taking a sweater that you see and recreating it, this was a sweater I saw from the Elder Statesman. It was selling for like $1,800 or something crazy like that, which Honestly, sweaters should be that much because we know when it's a hand crochet you can't do on a machine. So we know that someone hand crocheted that. So yay, yay for it being $1,800. It should be that much, but we can make it for a fraction of the cost. So I put together a combination of wool that I thought was super fun party. I have some metallic in there. I have some brushed alpaca mohair, some uh, variegated and some solid. And I went to town, went to work, trying to figure out how to create it, and it's perfect. I love it. There are two tutorials on this on Patreon. It's called the Chaos Sweater. And it took me a second to figure out the short rows, but so glad I did. Again, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, I don't, I'm gonna have to go back and look at my own video again, but I love how it turned out, and I love this little collar with the extra double stitching there, and it's so, cozy and I feel like crochet garments can sometimes be difficult to wear but I think because this is made of alpaca and mohair it's a little more drapey and it makes such a statement so all of these pieces I'm very proud of and I just want to encourage you to look at your stash look at what you have maybe view the world through a different lens of oh can I make that can I create that can I recreate that because there's so much inspiration out there, especially because fashion moves so quickly. Thank you so much as always for joining me here on YouTube and I will see you soon, bye.